The Las Vegas trip lives on. This time, we try our luck at the home of the Roman dictator himself, Caesar's Palace. For some reason, whenever I want to film a video here, nobody wants to come with, but I've always ran hot and this session was no different. We hop into the 1-3 cash games in for $300, looking to run up a stack. First hand of note, we look down at Jack-10 offsuit from the big blind. This two limps to me and I raise it up to $13, and the middle position and the button both put in the call, so we're going three ways to the flop. With $40 in the pot, the flop is an outstanding one, it comes jack, jack, eight, we have trips. I lead out for $11 here and the middle position player folds, but the button puts in the call. Heads up to the turn, it gives us a boat, it comes the eight of clubs. We're chopping against any other jack, so that's good against queen jack, king jack, and ace jack. I don't really see the need to bloat a pot here, so I start with a check. The button decides that he wants to bet, this time for $20. I put in a smooth call and we're heads up to a river. 102 in the pot, the river comes the ace of diamonds. I check and the button goes all in for $95. I think a fold here would be way too nitty. A snap call comes from me with one red chip. The opponent shows 10-9 for a busted straight draw and we're gonna scoof down that pot with a boat. Next hand, we look down at Jack-10, this time the suited variety of spades. We're under the gun and raise it up to $11. We get three callers, so we're going four ways to a flop out of position here with 47 in the pot. Flop's an interesting one, it comes ace, queen, nine. So we flop the open ender to king, making us Broadway, or the eight, giving us the queen high straight. Small blind donks into us for $20, and I think our hand is too strong to just fold right now. I put in $20 and all the other players fold. Heads up to the turn with the small blind in position here, gives us Broadway, comes the king of diamonds. We have the nuts on the board. Small blind now checks, which is unfortunate. We're hoping for him to have a pair, something like an ace or a queen. That way we can get some extra value here when our straight comes in. We need to do the betting ourselves though. He doesn't do it for us. I fire half pot for $41. Unfortunately, it looks like his donk into three other players on the flop was a bluff. It was weakness. He puts in the fold here and we're just gonna take down this pot with the nuts. 4-5 of diamonds from the big blind here gets checked around to us. We decide to put in the check and we're going five ways to the flop. If I'm showing you guys five high here in the big blind, you know the flop's going to be exceptional. It comes seven, eight, six, bang, we flop the eight high straight. I lead out for $12 here, just looking to build a pot. A lot of two pair set and flush draw combos here I think people can call us with. The middle position and the hijack aren't done with the hand just yet. They put in the call and we're going three ways to the turn. $41 in the pot, the turn comes with three of hearts. Nothing changes on this board. We still have the bottom end of the straight here. And now I go for a chunky sized bet, $45. Just looking to charge two pair set and flush draws. Additionally, there could be some straight draws as well. I bet $45 here. The middle position has 375 in his stack, but he puts in the fold. The hijack has around $35 left in his stack and he puts in the call. Not really the outcome we were hoping for there. We're going heads up all into the river. The river is the absolute worst card in the deck. Not only does it pair the board, it also brings in the club front door flush draw. We show our eight high straight here and the opponent shows nine deuce of hearts. So he picked up additional equity on the turn with the heart flush draw, but he had the open ended straight draw on the flop. Nice to be taking down that pot. Great that our flopped straight held up. We're in the house of a Roman emperor, so it's only fitting that we pick up pocket kings here in this next hand on the button. A few limps to me and I raise it up to $14 and only the under the gun limper puts in the call. Heads up to the flop with $35 in the pot comes three, five, seven, rainbow. Under the gun donks into me for $12 and I think a call is appropriate here. Sometimes I could be going for a raise, but in this instance, I just put in $12 when we're off to a turn. $59 in the pot brings a wet card. It comes the four of clubs, a four liner here to a six being straight. Additionally, the backdoor club flush draw comes in. Under the gun does not slow down here. He bets $23 into 59 and I think we have a no brainer call. I put in five red chips. 85 in the pot, heads up to the river, comes another bad card, it comes the eight of clubs. But when he slows down and checks here, I think we have the best hand and we can't miss out on a little bit of extra value here with our kings. Additionally, we have the king of clubs in our hand, thereby making it a little bit harder for him to have some flushes. I go for a value bet here of $20, just looking to get called by a pair. Sure enough, he calls, I show my hand, he mucks, and we scoop that pot. Easy game. The next hand is definitely the hand of this session. Drop a like on this video when you realize why it is this hand is out of control. 
Look down at king queen offsuit with around 530 in our stack, we're under the gun. I raise it up to $11 here which is pretty standard and the button puts in the call. The button's name is Brandon and he follows our TikTok page. We just met him today, he's a great guy and you'll see why. Everybody else puts in the fold, we're going heads up, out of position to the flop. Flop of $26 in the pot is a great one for us, it comes queen, 4-4. Four, four. It's unlikely his button calling range here is going to have too many 4s, although he probably does have more 4s in his range than we do from the under the gun opening position. I start with a check here for deception. Brandon and I were doing a little table talk before this hand in a previous one, so I started with a check here just looking to play this hand tricky. Brandon checks it behind, which is not what we wanted to see, and we're going off to a turn. I now expose the king of hearts. I never do this. Don't roast me in the comments. This is all for fun. This is a guy who watches my TikToks and I want to have some fun with him. I show the king of hearts here and the turn comes the three of hearts. Interesting situation here, but now we need to get some value. I bet $11. Brandon puts in the call here after seeing my king of hearts and we're off to the river. River comes a queen of diamonds, which is an absolute gin card. We're not losing to too many hands here, obviously with a boat. We're only pretty much losing to pocket fours here, and I bet out for $35. Brandon snap goes all in for around $500 here, which is definitely strange. Most likely he's doing this with any queen in his hand, just looking to put pressure on my queens and uh, forcing me off a chop here, but that's not what's going to happen here. It's interesting that I still have the king of hearts exposed here. If you have king, queen, that's sick, and you deserve my money. I snap him off. I say I do. I show the queen of spades, and he shows pocket threes. So we're going to scoop that huge pot here over a thousand dollars in it with a boat interesting that brandon went for the all in there with his pockets threes obviously he had another boat threes full of queens but i think a call there on the river is a little bit better in brandon's shoes thanks for watching the tiktoks and the vlogs brandon i appreciate your support and uh, no disrespect, but I also appreciate your money. He says that's sick, and I guess showing a king of hearts there on the turn was the best move possible for me. It confused him a little bit, and we're going to drag that huge pot. After losing that hand, he comes up to me and talks to me about my vlog and my TikTok. He yells out that he's going to make the vlog, and some other people at the table ask who I am, and he says Wolfgang Poker. So now pretty much the whole room knows that I'm making a video now. Some other people from other tables turn around and look at me. It's going to be a great end of this session. As if our night couldn't get any better, we look down on the cutoff with pocket aces. We have around 1,080 in our stack, and a middle position raises it to $10. Three bet incoming from us here. We raise it up to $30, and the big blind puts in the call, and the middle position player folds. Heads up to the flop here, which comes three, five, jack, two hearts. We have the ace of hearts in our hand here, and an overpair, obviously. And I go for some deception here on the flop. In hindsight, I think a bet is a little bit better here, holding the ace of hearts in our hand. We unblock king jack, queen jack, those hands that can pay us off here for a bet. I decide to go for the check back when we're off to a turn. Turn comes the five of clubs, so now we have two pair. The big blind checks us again here, and even though it appears that he's pretty much done with this hand, we need to go for a bet here. I size the $35. Our hunch is true. The big blind folds his cards, and we're going to take down that $71 pot. $1,100 in our stack. We look down at ace jack of diamonds from the UTG plus one position. Under the gun limps, and I raise it up to $12. Action folds around to her, and she puts in the call, so going heads up to the flop. $28 in the pot. The flop is a great one for us. It comes ace high, ace 10, five, and the under the gun now donks into us for $15. I never really understand what a donk does here in this situation, but I'm not going to raise and I'm not going to fold. I throw in three red chips and we're heads up to a turn. Turn gives us top trips. It comes the ace of spades. UTG decides to bet $30 again here. I guess she could be doing this with ace queen or ace king, but we're not in it. We're not going to fold this hand here. We stick in six red chips this time, indicating a call and we're heads up to a river. River with 118 in it comes a nine of clubs. Doesn't really bring in anything. We still have three aces with a jack kicker, and now the under the gun gives up and checks. We definitely need to be going for value here, so that's what I do. But I don't think she has an ace when she checks here on the river, so I'm going to bet small here, just looking to go for some thin value. I bet $30 again. Under the gun quickly puts in the call, and we show ace jack of diamonds, which is good enough to take this pot down. She mucks her cards, and we pick up that $178 pot. You guys asked for a few more filler hands in here. Hands that aren't huge, but I play, and you want to see how I play them. We look down at king, queen of clubs here from the small blind. 1200 in our stack, and the middle position opens to $13, and the button puts in the call. We don't want to go out of position here to two other opponents with a good hand like king, queen of clubs. 
I go for that three bet and I wanna make it chunky here because I'm out of position. I make it $55. Initial raiser folds and that usually means that the button will as well. And sure enough, he does. So you asked for it, you got it. Here's a boring hand. I pick up a hand preflop here with king queen in the three bet. I can't end the vlog on that boring hand, can I? I'm not gonna end that vlog on a boring hand for you guys. I'm gonna end it on an exciting one. Pocket aces here on the button and the middle position opens it up to $13. I raise it up to $35. And he pretty quickly puts in the call, so going heads up in position now to the flop with $74 in the pot. Flop's a great one for us. It comes king, four, eight with two hearts. Middle position starts with a check, and I'd expect him to do that with his entire range here when I three bet him. And I think I make another crucial mistake in this vlog and check back the flop for the same reason I didn't like checking back when the jack high flop came earlier in this vlog. I think we need to be betting here because we don't really block too many kings, except for ace king, obviously. There's two hearts on board. There's a lot of cards on the turn we don't really want to see. I check behind here and let's hope for a clean turn. Turn comes the queen of spades and the opponent checks again. Okay Wolfgang, please bet big here. Please charge him for his draws and his one pair type of hands. I bet $30. Middle position pretty quickly puts in the call, so going heads up in position to the river. River comes another king, it comes a king of clubs, and now the opponent leads out for $50, which is very concerning. It screams a king here, but there's $134 in the pot, and the opponent bet $50. We didn't play aces this way to fold to a river donk bet, although it pretty much primarily is a busted heart draw or trip kings. Sure enough, in this hand, it is the latter one of the two. He shows king 10 here. Interesting that he called a three bet with King-10 offsuit from middle position, but he's gonna take down that pot here. Results orientated, I'm not really sure if a bet on the flop and the turn would have got him to fold, so I guess we lost a little bit less than we could have if we decided to bet on the flop. Oh well, opponent, don't spend all my money in one place. With that last hand over with, we rack up our chips and head to the cage. We got out of the game there for 1086, so a profit of 786, if my math is correct. Brandon, if you're watching this, shout out to you. Thanks for coming up to me and saying hi. If you guys are new and made it all the way to the end, be sure to subscribe. I post every week. Leave a comment down below, like the video, and as always, I'll catch you guys on the felt or in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.